Hey there, and today in this video we are going to solve bypassing GraphQL brute force predictions. So the API endpoint has a rate limiter that returns an error if it receives too many requests from the same origin in a short space of time. And to solve the lab, we have to brute force a login mechanism to sign in as Carlos. So basically, we have to bypass a rate limiter present in the API endpoint and find out the password for Carlos. Okay, there's no more functionalities left, so we're gonna go to Web Suite and analyze the HTTP history. So here we have the first GraphQL request, and this is a mutation which basically logs the user into the website. So I'm going to send this to repeater, and here are some other GraphQL requests like change email and other queries that fetches blog posts and summary of the blog so we are not interested in these queries the one we are interested in is this mutation operation and the name of this mutation is login okay so here is a nice view of this here we can see that this mutation operation is taking input variable as argument and this input variable is being replaced by username and password that the user provides and then it sends it to the GraphQL server and in the response, we get this success and token. This is how this mutation is working. Cool. Now let's try to change the password here to something else and send it to the server. Of course, this is a false password, but I want to check how many wrong attempts it can take. This is a third one. And in the fourth attempt, we are getting this error. It says you have made too many incorrect login attempts. Please try again in one minute. So the rate limit is working. It's not taking more than four attempts in login. So we cannot find out the password of the Carlos if we try to change the password just like this because of this rate limit. So there must be another way. Well, there is something called alias in GraphQL. Alias allow you to change the field name or more like rename the field, but the function will be same. For example, in this case, the name of this mutation is login, but in aliases, you can change it to any name and it will still give you the same response of token and success and whatever field you provided. So the function remains the same, but the name changes. In order to write that, I'm going to modify this mutation. So I'm gonna send this to repeater again just to keep the original one and let's mess around with the first request. So let's get rid of this. I'm gonna type here in mutation, open and close curly braces. Inside the mutation, I'm going to type the name of the alias. So let's say ABC. And when you provide the alias, you also provide a colon and then the name of the actual mutation name, that is login. So I'm gonna type it login here. And then there are curly braces because inside the curly braces, we have to provide username and password. There's also one thing I want you to note that over here, we saw that there is the input variable and this input variable is being replaced by the username and password. Now, whether you write the username and password directly over here or you put a variable, it doesn't matter. It means the same thing. So in this case, I'm going to write the username and password directly instead of using variables just to reduce confusion. Okay, so just like it's written here, I'm going to go back and type input and then curly braces. And inside the curly braces, I'm going to type password. Let's say ABC. And then username Carlos. Keep the values in double quotes, otherwise you will get error because I haven't encountered this before. Now again, open up the curly braces to type the fields here. So the fields were token and success. 
Of course it depends on you, if you don't want to see token you can remove it and just get the success response. But let's say I want both of them. Now I'm gonna copy this and paste it here again and I'm gonna type D here. So basically we have two aliases. First one is ABC and other one is ABCD but they both are going to return us the same fields for login mutation. So I'm gonna send the request. Okay, we are getting this error unknown operation named login. Let's remove this variable and try to send the request again. Okay, I'm not sure why we are getting this error because the syntax is correct. Let's try to give a little space here and send the request again. Okay, it got formatted automatically. Let's try to send the request again. And this time we are getting the response. So of course the success will be false because the passwords are incorrect, but now we know that how these mutations are working. I guess we were getting that error because of the indentation. Okay, now we know how aliases are working, but to brute force we have to try hundreds of passwords. So we have to do this hundreds of time. I mean, we cannot type this hundreds of time even though if we copy paste, but we still have to replace the password for every mutation, right? For that, we can use some kind of script. So if I go to this lab, here we have been given this list authentication lab passwords. So we can use this word list to brute force. So before we move on, let me show you the script that I came up with. I created this by using a little help of ChatGPT. Anyway, so this script, this is a Python script and it will take a word list of name wordlist.txt and it will create an output of number of mutation with different aliases in mutations.txt. So this is the mutation template. Here, this is the mutation operation. So everything is same. We have this login, input, username and password. You can see for password, it will be replaced by the words in the word list. And in brute force over here, numbers will be replaced here. So every alias has a different name. So it's going to read the file and write it in the mutation. If you want to access this code, you can get it from the description. So I'm going to copy this and open my terminal. I'm going to type nano exploit.py and here I'm going to paste this. Okay save it and I'm going to give it all permissions for read write and execute now we can run this file but to run this file we have to provide a word list see there is no word list so let's go over here and copy all this Okay, so the word list was already present in the directory, so it took it and wrote all the mutations in this mutations.txt file. Let's open this up. And here you can see all the mutation with different aliases. So here we have the first alias, second alias, and you can see the passwords are different for all of them. So it totally depends on the word list and number of lines present in it. It will generate the aliases according to it.
Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to copy it and go to Pipe Suite. And I'm going to replace it. Everything looks fine and now we can send the request. And in the response, we can see fields for every mutation. Now we just have to find a response code that says true instead of false. So I'm going to type true here and here it is. Brute Force 20 actually gave us a true response. Okay, let's check which password it had, Brute Force 20. And here we have it. This one is giving us a true response. Let's try it. I'm gonna go to the application. Log out. And type the password. And we are logged in. As you can see, it doesn't matter if there is a rate limit present. By using aliases, you can bypass those rate limits. Aliases can also be used to perform a DDoS attack on a GraphQL application. If you are interested to know more about it, you can check out this video from the i button. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.